International success coach and noted author Constance Arnold delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices as well as with best-selling authors and experts she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and your words to work for you and to bring about the life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network and I am Constance Arnold, your most gracious host of the Think, Believe and Manifest talk show and of course, today I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of southern flavor from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia and I am so excited that you have joined me today from all over the world, and might I add, you are in for a great show today. So if you are listening to this recording, you have been attracted here by the Spirit so that you can receive the answers that you've been searching and praying for, and I believe that they will be revealed to you doing this recording and that your life will never be the same again after listening. Well, how are you doing? I want to say, first of all, Happy Easter to all of you. It is Easter Sunday, and as most of you know, I am a Christian, and this day for me is very important, and it's really symbolic of God's love and sacrifice for me and for you. So I wanted to say that, first of all. Have you had a great week? Are you having a great day? Got a lot of questions for you. And are you excited about the unlawful? limited, I love that word, possibilities that exist in your life right now. Well, I am doing very well. Uh, Of course, I am back from the Law of Attraction Conference, which was held in Palm Springs, and it was a phenomenal, great conference. You know, all of the speakers were so powerful, and I learned so much myself. And I met so many of my listeners who've been listening to me for years in person. And, you know, people were there from all over the world. And if you've never been to Palm Springs, it's in the middle of the desert. It was my first time there. It was 99 degrees, which was very hot during the day. But it was cool at night, so it was... uh, a pleasurable, wonderful learning experience for me. And everybody there was so gracious. I had people who had heard me say that I eat organic food, and uh, one of my former clients purchased me lunch, and, and then two of my clients drove down, I think about three hours uh, from Northern California, and they took me out to dinner, so I had lots of surprises, and I tell you what, I learned a lot, and I'm going to implement a lot of the things and share them with you that I learned from the conference, and one thing that you might want to do in order to prepave or really arrange or create any project trip or anything that you're doing, before I went to Palm Springs, I said certain declarations and I declared, this is going to be a great trip, I'm going to have a great uh, plane ride, and really from Atlanta to California, we had no turbulence, and that's about a 4.5 or 5-hour flight. I said I'm going to have one of the best rooms in the hotel and that everything was going to work for my good. And guess what? That is exactly what happened. So the great lesson that you can learn here is that you can prepave your way or prepay your day or declare your day just like I did and make things happen for you. I call it sending the word of God out in front of me in order to create a wonderful experience. And so I'm just so grateful. 
Well, today I'm going to be teaching on how to have hope for your wildest dreams. You know, it is the will of God for us to live extraordinary, wild dreams. And um, so many times we just don't know how to do that. So I'm going to be teaching today. So get out your iPad, get out your old-fashioned pad and pencil, and I want you to take notes. But before I get started, I want to remind you about my new uh, Attracting Love Affirmations that's on iTunes. And I am so proud uh, of this uh, really wonderful recording. It's also on my website. It's a powerful love affirmation uh, CD with binaural beats, theta waves, and harmonic music in the background. And, I, and all of that means that it helps to align your brain wave in the frequency of love. And every time I listen to it, it does something to me, and that's what everybody else is saying. And so remember, you attract who you are, not what you want. So at the end of the show, I want you to stay tuned, and I'm going to play five minutes of that so that you can just see that, how it really relaxes you and how it really helps you to align uh, your thinking and your believing in that frequency of love. So I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned at the end of the show. Also, many of you have purchased my new ebook, Attracting and Manifesting Love. A lot of folks did in Palm Springs. And so it's a great book. It's a great investment. So all you need to do is go to my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. You know, you can download it to your Kindle or you can download it in ebook format or you can get the PDF copy or you can get the hard copy. And look at the other coaching products that I have designed, the other affirmations and my other book, Secrets of Success. And guess what? I designed them just with you in mind. Well, are you ready to learn how to really bring more hope into your life so that you can live your wildest dreams? And after this quick commercial, I'll be right back. You're listening to Law of Attraction Radio Network, enhancing the well-being of millions of listeners worldwide. LOARadioNetwork.com is heard through 25 different internet radio stations as well as iTunes Radio, Stitcher.com, and our mobile apps. The Law of Attraction Radio Network, your trusted source of daily inspiration at LOARadioNetwork.com. Okay, I am back, and are you ready? And, you know, today I just felt led to really talk about hope. You know, it is Easter Sunday, and, you know, hope is what all of us need. And I'm going to be talking about hope so that you can begin living your wildest dreams. And many times, you know, when we look at the news or, you know, when we hear what's going on, it appears that people are very hopeless. And so if you are in that situation today, I am here to bring you hope. So you know me, don't you? I'm a, I am a former professor, and so I'm going to be laying a foundation for you, and I'm really going to be sharing with you 10 things that you can begin to do in order to bring or to manifest or to increase hope in your life so that you can begin living your wildest dreams. So what is hope? Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for certain things to happen or to come to pass. It is to wish for something with expectation of its fulfillment. It's to look forward to something with confidence or expectation. It's to expect and desire. It is a wish or desire accompanied by confident expectation of its fulfillment. So you see those key words, don't you? Expectation, desire, fulfillment, and that is the will of God for your life. And so, you know, optimism, aspire, cheer, pleasure, 
because you were created for joy. You were created to live a faith-filled life, and you were created to live a life of hope. Now, I'm not saying that life is easy because many times life can be very difficult, but how can you, in the midst of those difficult circumstances, still live the life of your dreams? So, So what is hopelessness? which is the opposite of hope. See if you can identify with any of these. Gloom, despondency, discouragement, pain, misery, sorrow, disheartenment, dashed hopes, dejection. Oh, can you see the difference in those words? And if you could identify with hopelessness, then that is the state in which you are currently living. And, you know, just my own story. You know, people at the conference, you know, they look at me now. Oh, Constance, you have it going on. But I've been through some very difficult times in my life. I have I have been in situations and circumstances where I felt very depressed, where I was very depressed, you know, where I felt very despondent, where I was suicidal, and, you know, possibly even thinking about God, is, is life worth living? I mean, can I even go on? Can I even... Uh, Uh, get up the next day. I mean, what's life all about? I know what it's like to have no money and to struggle and and to file bankruptcy and to just be in a very difficult, despondent place and, you know, just hopelessness. You know, I know what it's like to be in love and have all of your expectations and hopes in that relationship, and it does not work out. I know what it's like to be fired from a job. So I've been there and done that. And so I'm not teaching today from a very sort of, uh, you know, lackadaisical kind of cannot be in touch with where you really are, but I'm teaching you from a place of my own experiences, plus 25 years of working with people who have been in very difficult circumstances and or situations. And so I want you to listen very carefully, and I'm going to keep saying that it is the will of God for you to live a hopeful and a joyful and a faith-filled life so that you can live the life of your dreams, because it does take hope and faith to live those dreams. And the first thing I want to talk about before I get to the 10 principles is um, the life of Abraham. And for those of you who are not familiar with Abraham, I'm just going to paraphrase it for you. Abraham was a patriarch in the Bible, and God appeared to Abraham, and he said, Abraham, you're going to be a father. But Abraham was in his 90, he was 90 years old. So can you imagine God saying to you, you're going to be a father? And so, you know, maybe some of you feel too old, or you feel, I don't have the money, or you feel like, oh, how could I even have this idea, you know, of a dream? And so uh, God told Abraham, well, you're going to have a son. His wife, uh, Sarah, had never had a child. But this is what it says. It says that even though uh, Abraham didn't see anything and some time had passed, maybe 10 years, and Abraham was 100 years old. And I love this. It says, and Abraham, contrary contrary to hope, He believed in hope. So that meant that in the natural, if he looked at his five senses, there was no hope. But he said he believed beyond that hope. That meant that he put his faith in a hope that he he could not see, feel, or touch. And so he put his thinking and his belief on the promise of God, which was you're going to have a child. And then it says, and Abraham was not weak in faith. He did not consider his own body, even though it was already dead, and neither did he consider his wife and the fact that she had never had children. And he did not waver at the promise of God, but instead he was strengthened because he gave glory to God and he was fully persuaded that the dream or that the idea 
which God has promised, had promised him that God was able to perform. So let's look at that. He hoped against hope. Now, some of you right now may not have any hope. You don't see anything. You don't feel anything. But Abraham put his hope in the promise of God. And I'm asking you now to be, begin to put your hope in God, in yourself, in your in, in in your belief, in your idea, and it says that he hoped against hope, and so that's what you're going to be. And I love this part. He did not consider his own body. That meant that he didn't consider his five senses. He didn't consider the fact that Abraham, you are a hundred years old and you do not have it going on, and neither does your wife Sarah. And so I'm using that using that as a foundation so that no matter what's going on in your life, you can what? Begin to hope against hope. That means you're going to be, begin to look at the invisible things in your life. And I'm going to give you 10 principles as to how you can do that. Are you ready? Principles for increasing hope so that you can begin living the life of your dreams or living uh, the wildest dreams of your life. Number one, overcome your regrets. Oh, that's a big one. You know, holding on to your regrets or what you wish had happened or what should have happened from your past, it really leads you to what? Only more regrets because it's like an un unhealthy cycle. So what happens is you, you're you remorseful, you, you really regret what did not happen, or maybe you regret some things that you did. And I'm going to say to you that you did the best you could at that time with the knowledge that you had. Now that you have more knowledge, you possibly would have done things differently. But can you see how when you just keep thinking about, oh, I, I regret that, I regret leaving that job, I regret making those financial decisions, it just creates a very unhealthy cycle. Because we know that when you dwell on the past, you get more of that, and you can't move forward. So when you talk about, when you think about, and when you create that same vibration, you get more of that. So what I'm going to tell you to do is put your I am-ness in the middle of where you are right now instead of looking back. What do I mean by that? Let's just say you want to become uh, an entrepreneur. And right now, like Abraham, you don't see anything in the natural world. The way that you can begin to look beyond your current circumstances is to begin to put your I, I am this. So that would look like I am moving toward my car business, uh, which will uh, gross me and my family an extra $100,000 a year. So can you see how I took that I am this? I am healthy, vibrant, and outgoing or I am a master degree level coach, or I have customers who love my services and or products and are ready to purchase them now. So you, you, you've taken your I amness, which is in the now, and you put it right here in the now. You begin to speak it, and as you speak it, you'll begin to believe it. So that's one way you can overcome your regrets. So let's not talk about what you should have done, what you could have done, because what happens in that cycle is shame. You know, and shame just simply means that you are ashamed of who you are and what you've done. Shame creates an unhealthy cycle for you. And I think shame also creates learned helplessness. And when you focus in on your regrets or your past, learn helplessness, it puts you in that state that I used to be in, which is a pitiful state. Poor me. It puts you in a powerless state. And a lot of times if you've seen your parents or your mom, well, she just says, I just don't know what to do. That's learned helplessness. I see it a lot in females. And so I'm going to talk about later on how you have the power. So number one is overcome your regrets and put your new I amness in the nowness of you, your reality. 
Now, Abraham, he it says that he gave glory to God. That means he thanked God. God, I thank you for this child. I thank you for my new baby. I thank you for the new son that's coming along. So he put his I amness in his seemingly impossible situation. And you know, God specializes in impossibilities. And guess what? He gave glory to God. He he said thank you. He was grateful and he was strengthened. So you can be strengthened and increase your hope by overcoming your regrets. Number two, I think you need to confess that, you know, you're you're not okay right now. So what do I mean by that? You know, sometimes when you've been in very difficult situations, you don't need to waste any more time or energy pretending that everything is fine, pretending that you're not frustrated or hurt or lonely or even scared or frightened. So you need to acknowledge that, and then you need to reach out and get the help that you need. And I might add professional help because sometimes just talking to a friend, a girlfriend, that's really cool, but they don't have the expertise to what really move you forward. So I I strongly encourage people to really get the help because sometimes biochemically you may need some meds, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. Uh, If you're feeling helpless, sometimes I really encourage my clients, get your meds for, you know, for a season, maybe 30, 60, 90 days, and then when things turn around for you, when you have a a more uh, clearer clarity on what you desire, then you can, you know, really wean yourself off of those. And, you know, and I'm amazed at so many people that say that they can't afford counseling or coaching but and, and will not invest in themselves but will invest in designer clothes, bags, weaves, wigs, et cetera. So, you know, let it be known and acknowledge, hey, I am not okay. I have been in a hopeless state. I feel like I need emotional and psychological help and uh, begin to, you know, get that help that you need. Uh, I know that when I was going through my divorce, I went to counseling. I needed it. And I was telling someone the other day, they were asking me, um, Constance, what are some milestones in your life? I said, besides my relationship with God, the second most important thing that I feel that I did is not my education, It was when I realized that I needed help, and I really invested in counseling, and I went to support groups or share groups for about two years. That particular decision really changed my life. All right, so acknowledge that you need help. Number three, we're talking about how to bring more hope into your life so that you can live your wildest dreams. Don't allow your current roadblock to halt your journey. Or another way I can say that is don't allow your current circumstance to be your journey. Now, Abraham could have said, oh, my God, I'm 100 years old. How am I going to ever have a child? Sarah's never, she's 90-something years old. You know, I don't even know if she can get pregnant. And so you have to shift your thinking. So, so as you move forward, as you as you are traveling your journey, you're going to have some bumps in the road. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to have some obstacles, some setbacks, and some delays. And you know, many times those are are not easy. But I think you have to shift. You have to do a paradigm shift in your thinking and realize that you cannot allow these roadblocks to determine, uh, to to really hold you back from really moving forward in your life. So you kind of got to think of the roadblocks as little pebbles, you know, like little pebbles that you see on the beach in your pathway that can be cleared away easily instead of these big boulders or a big rock that paralyze you. You know, I know the case of a woman whose whose husband left her for a younger woman, and and that's traumatic. She had been married to him for twenty something years. That is a very difficult circumstance and situation. But five years later, that situation had become a roadblock for her. She had stopped 
traveling her own journey. She was very bitter, very resentful, and still angry uh, after five years. Have you ever talked to somebody and they're sharing something with you and you can feel the anger, you can feel the rage, and that's what had happened to her. And so, of course, she was not living uh, the life of her dreams because she was still very mired in what had happened to her, that roadblock had really halted her journey. And so, as I said earlier, man, have I had many delays in my life? You better believe it. I've had some very difficult times. You've heard me share that for 10 years, no one paid me to speak. For 10 years. I developed curriculums, and no one invited me to conduct leadership training. Was I frustrated? Yes. Was I uh, a little depressed? Yes. Uh, I felt like it was a, a big delay, but I just kept moving forward, and that's what I want you to do. Don't give any circumstance like Abraham did. He did not give that circumstance power over him to really stop him from moving forth towards his goal, and I want you to do the same. Remember, I don't know if you guys internationally remember this lady, but her name was Diana Nyad, and she was a swimmer. She is a swimmer, and she completed the historic swim from Cuba to Florida. And no one had ever done that before, and she had attempted and tried many times previously, but for one reason or another, the jellyfish or she became exhausted. She had not been able to accomplish that goal. And so what would have happened to her goal or her intention or her dream if she had said, oh, well, I'm just going to give up. I'm almost 60 years old. This is never going to happen, et cetera. So that is a great example of someone who made a decision that that even though I tried, and I think she would train for a year and then try. So can you imagine training for a year, seven to eight hours a day, a day, and then you go out and within one day nothing happens? What about people who even uh, really uh, compete in the Olympics? You know, they trained for years and then maybe on the first try, Nothing happens and they lose, and they have to make a decision right then and there. I I refuse. I am not going to allow this one defeat really to hold me back, to stop me, to hinder me. So that is number three. Okay, I want you to think about your life as I'm talking about this because I really took a lot of time and a lot of prayer around really sharing with you because I, I get a lot of emails, and and I love emails, and I love hearing from you, but I can hear the hopelessness, you know, that people write in to me. And I'm going to say to you that just listening to the podcast is really great, but you need more. You need coaching. You need mentoring. You need people around you that believe in you. And you're going to hear me say later on, anytime you are isolated in your thinking or isolated and alone, really you're not as successful as you could be. Every successful company, every successful venture realizes that it takes two to really bring about success. All right, number four, we're talking about ten principles that you can begin to utilize, that you can open up to so that you can bring more hope into your life so that you can live your wildest dreams. A belief in a better tomorrow or faith. So what do I mean by that? That you have to have a conviction that right now in my life it might appear to be a little hopeless, a little dark, but but I just know that something is going to happen. I just know that another day can bring new circumstances, new opportunities, and new solutions into my life 
to improve this situation that I'm in. I can't remember who the singer was, but I think it was Diana Washington. She says, what a difference a day makes, 24 little hours. And so, you know, God can change your life in 24 hours. You know, you could go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow and have a million-dollar idea. You could go to sleep tonight and um, not be feeling well and wake up tomorrow and God can tell you, the spirit can say, uh, take this herb or, or take this uh, medicine or begin doing this or begin eliminating this out of your diet, etc. Because we know that all you need is one word from God and God lives in the eternal now. And so just a belief in a better tomorrow. Uh, recently, I think it was just this week, Pharrell Williams, most of you know him, he is the writer and he wrote the lyrics of the happy song. And I just love that song. Everybody loves that song. So he was on Oprah this week and he said that uh, none of the radio stations would play his song. And, of course, can you imagine how he felt he was calling all of these radio stations or his probably his rep was calling all of these radio stations and say, hey, you got a great song, but because the song is just sort of really great and upbeat, it wasn't rap, it wasn't a love song, people were saying, no, we're not interested in that. And Oprah asked him, well, how did you feel? And he said something very profound. He said, you know, uh, you know, me and my wife, we just knew that it was something special about the song. And so he shared that once the official video was released, it went viral. And now all over the world, it is the number one song in the world, the happy song. And if you don't know what that is, you've got to Google it by Pharrell. That's with the P, uh, Williams. And so isn't that powerful? One day, we're talking about a belief in a better tomorrow, nobody was playing his song and the next day, the entire world. And really on Oprah, he broke down and he cried because he said he was just amazed at the impact that the song had. And, you know, just that one idea that you have may literally change the world just like Pharrell's song did. But if you if you stay in hopelessness, if you stay in, oh, my God, I don't know what's going to happen, then you will not really create the powerful thing, you know, that the world is waiting for. So I tell people, if you just keep moving forward, it gets better. And, and you might not can't see it, you might can't feel it, but if you just put, my father used to say, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I know there have been many days I said, God, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. This doesn't particularly feel great to me, but I'm going to keep getting up and doing what I know to do. And so that's what I'm asking you to do. Just believe that tomorrow is going to be a better day. So you might be saying, Constance, you know, that's so hard for me. And I'm not saying that it isn't difficult, but I'm saying that you can choose moment by moment that, you, that you're going to believe. And, and I think what happens to people uh, with suicide is that they have desperate moments where if they had just been in contact with someone or if they have not isolated themselves, if they have just let somebody know, as I said earlier, hey, you know, I've really been feeling sort of down lately and feeling hopeless, and I really need some help. So as I said earlier, isolation never brings success. And are there periods in our lives when we need to be alone? Certainly. But I'm saying if your lifestyle is one that you're the long ranger in business. I was telling someone the other day, he said, Constance, I'm really frustrated about my business. And I said, who are you collaborating with? He said, no one. I said, who are you networking with? No one. Who are you mentoring with? No one. Who are you coaching with? No one. So he thought that because he was at home, in his office, doing his work, and that certainly is a part of it, but he wasn't connecting with anybody. And it's just like if you have the greatest product in the world, but nobody knows about it, 
people would not purchase your product. So a belief in a better tomorrow. And so how do you get that by faith? And how do you get faith? I believe that it comes through, one way that it comes through is reading inspirational material. If you would just take 15 minutes a day and read the Bible, read something inspirational, read something motivational. I personally believe that there's a difference between listening and reading. When I listen, I get motivated and inspired, but when I read, I get revelation. So so did you hear that? And so just believe, do something every day, 10 to 15 minutes to shift and change your faith. Okay, number five, pain transforms. So no matter what you're going through right now, and some of you may be in difficult throbbing life events or situations that really might be tearing at your soul, you know, your heart, you know, and it's very difficult. You know, maybe you are are in a situation where someone left you. And I always say that if someone leaves you, then God has something higher, bigger, or better for you. And if someone leaves you, they were never meant to be a part of your entire destiny. And so, may, or maybe it's, you know, maybe you've been diagnosed with something. Or, or maybe you have a teenage child that is really giving you a difficult time. And so once again, I know that pain is really difficult, but I believe that if you allow it, that pain can transform you. And so there there are many lessons that you can learn in really life's most painful events that they can teach you. And then once you acknowledge the pain and then learn the lesson, you can really move forward. And almost everyone who I know who's been extremely successful, has been through some really difficult times. But once again, it's your perspective. It's that paradigm shifting in your mindset where you say, I'm going to take the lessons learned from this. Anyone who has ever hurt you or left you, you can say, thank you so much. Because of what I learned from that really traumatic experience, I can now go to my next relationship and love deeper and love fuller. And so we need to, once again, change or shift our thinking because what you want is transformation. You don't want behavior modification. Let me tell you the difference. Behavior modification has to do with the outside. Transformation has to do with the inside. So you want to be transformed from the inside out from your life experiences so that you can make healthy choices. A great example of that might be someone who's losing weight, who desires to lose weight. And then they say, well, I am going to get all of my fruit, I'm going to get my vegetables, and they just have a really good system in place. And that's great behavior modification, but they have not changed on the inside they have not transformed on the inside about loving themselves, about eating, exercising, et cetera. And so that's what you call a diet. It only lasts for a while. So you need to learn how to take your pain, your painful life transitions, and really let it transform you. Jack Canfield, uh, you know, he shared on my show that um, he was turned down a hundred and something times for his book, but all of that what transformed him on the inside, and he kept moving forward. Uh, a, a mom whose son got killed, that's very traumatic. I can't even imagine that. And what she did was she formed Moms Against Drunk Driving. So she took that very painful, difficult situation and she would let it transform her. Don't ever let a situation have power over you. Don't ever allow a situation to just crumble you. So I'm going to be talking about taking your power back later on, but that's what I want you to do. All right, number six, create small, you hear me say small, I didn't say big, small daily rituals or principles that will begin to give you glimmers of hope. You know, I'm really big on small baby steps 
because small baby steps lead to big dreams. And sometimes if you're in a, in a difficult or hopeless situation, it might seem too overwhelming for you to really do anything big. I had a client many years ago, and she was really suffering from depression. And she came to see me, and she said, Constance, I can't do anything. I said, so what can you do? So we, we decided that she could get up, take a shower, drink some coffee, go outside and work in her garden. That's all I asked her to do. Week two, because she loved baking cakes, I said, what I want you to do is get up, take a shower, have a cup of coffee, go and work in your garden, and then come back and bake a cake for your neighbor. So she did that. And so just doing those small baby steps really began to to realign her, to help her to reinvent her life, to create a new life because her husband had passed of almost 30 or 40 years, and just something that small. So can you see that? I, what small thing can you begin to do? What small ritual can you begin to do? Because the interesting thing is I tell people God blesses movement. When you begin to move, God moves. And I believe that the lady who baked the cake, that gave her so much joy when she took it over to her neighbor, on the inside that multiplied uh, uh, tremendously for her to, to have momentum. And so the next week when she came to me, she said, oh, Constance, I went shopping with a friend. I didn't have to tell her to do that. Why? Because once momentum begins to really increase in your life and you begin to see glimmers of hope for you to live life again, and by the way, she was able to do that and she remarried and she's really happy. So just taking those small baby steps during those painful times can really create miracles. You know, as I said, every successful person has really experienced bottom or really experienced really dark and, and deep places. But once again, it's what you focus in on. All righty. So can you see that? Can you see how you can begin to bring more hope, you know, in, into your life? And, and and so many of you are reinventing your lives, and that is not an easy task, but it can be exciting. So what small steps can you begin to implement in your life every day to reinvent your life? Let's just say you want to go back to school. Take 15 minutes a day, go online and research Call the different um, schools or colleges and just find out, have them to send you a package or talk to the admission rep. All of those things begin to what? Create glimmers of hope. One of the speakers at the conference said, do something, do anything. And I thought that was so cool because sometimes we don't know what to do. And I tell people, just do anything. It might be going back to school. It might be going to the gym. It might mean just getting out of your comfort zone. But you're rebuilding your life. I had another client who she had built her whole life around her husband and her children. Of course, the children were grown and gone. Hallelujah. And her husband, he had his own life. So she felt, you know, who am I now? Because her entire identity was tied up in her husband, you know, and her children. And so she had been accustomed to just staying at home and cooking, and her husband had retired, and he said, baby, we don't need all that food anymore. So she had to reinvent herself, and so she went back to night school, and she loved that, and I think she was in her 50s, might have been in her 60s. And then she got her bachelor's degree and her master's degree, and she earned a Ph.D. So how does she do that? She, she did that by taking small baby steps. And as you continually do that, I say God will put his supernatural on your natural progression or on your natural steps. All right, and we're talking about how can we bring more hope into our lives? How can we increase hope in our lives so that we can live uh, just the life of our dreams? Number seven is focus, and man, it is all about focus. You know, where is your attention? Where is your intention and attention? 
And and remember when I read the excerpt from Romans 4 where it says Abraham did not consider his own body now dead. So that means he wasn't looking at his body. He wasn't looking at, oh, my God, I'm 100 years old. But what was he looking at? He was looking beyond his body, beyond his current circumstances, to the promise that God has said to him. And so what you focus on expands or it gets bigger or magnified in your life. You know, and I always tell my clients, you know, take a look at what you have left in your life. Maybe you're in a very dismal place right now. Well, what do you have? What's left in your life? What's good about it? And focus in on that. And that's why, once again, gratitude is so important. Gratitude is nothing more than focus. You shift your focus from what you don't have to what you're grateful for. That's why, for me, I don't just write my gratitude. I say it out loud. God, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for a wonderful trip. And when I'm saying that, my focus is shifted and changed. All right, so remember, gratitude multiplies, and you know, and you get more of that. And so the question is, where is your intention and your attention? in the place where you are right now. <clears throat> so most people get lost in, okay, this is what I want, but I don't know how it's going to happen. I want to start a business concert, but I don't know how. The how is none of your business. All you need to do is be clear about what you want, keep your focus and intention on that, and bring your attention during the course of the day. And then as you do that, remember, you detach from the how. And then the spirit may say, or you may get an intuition, well, call John Doe, or go to this networking meeting, or go online and contact this person. So it's all about focus. Jack Canfield said on my show, show me a person with two visions and I'll show you a person who's divided. What did he mean by that? He meant that if you want to be an entrepreneur, but then the other half of the time you're saying, I don't have the money. You've heard me say, never let money stop you from doing what you want to do. Keep your intention and your attention on your product, your goal, or your service, and money will come, resources will come, etc. All right, number eight. I love this one. You've got the power. And I've said this one before in one of my other sessions, but I just felt led to say it. You know, when you're in a, a hopeless situation or a hopeless state, because when you're hopeless, it, it is a consciousness, it is a state, you, you feel powerless. And you you just feel like, I can't do it. And so it's like you give away your power. You forgot how powerful you are. I think statistics show that most people only use 5% of their ability. Uh, and I think Einstein used maybe 6 to 10%. And so look at all of that other 90% of power, ability, potential, possibilities that you have. And as I said earlier, many times we have learned helplessness. So in order for you to move forward, you have to remember who you are. Remember how powerful you are. Take a look at some of the things that you have accomplished. Look at how God, in the past, you were in a difficult situation and God brought you out of that. Surely God can, what, really move you forward. So remember you have the power Number nine, get rid of the hope killers. Oh, my God, what are the hope killers? Medicating yourself with too much sugar, TV, computer time, gossip, and maybe drinking alcohol. All of these are forms of, of um, just medicating yourself. They make you feel worse. They drain your energy. Did you know that a can of Coke has 10 teaspoons of sugar? So one thing that you can begin to do, uh, when you're in a hopeless state is to get rid of those hope killers. Had a guy who was just really depressed, lost his job, and he realized he was being a couch potato. Y'all know what a couch potato is, don't you? That's someone who just sits on the couch. And so one day he decided to get up and take a walk around the block, and, of course, that turned into a mile, five miles, ten miles, a marathon, 
Why? Because he got rid of the hope killers, and as a result of that, he was able to secure, maybe, I think, five different offers for a job offering more money than he had, he had ever experienced before. Why did that happen? Because he got rid of that that consciousness of hopelessness. So get rid of your hope killers. And then lastly, factor God or spirit into your current situation. You know, so many times, and I used to be guilty of this, trying to do things on my own, trying to make it happen. And it, I thought I was including God, but I was just struggling. You know, I, I was just frustrated. And so factoring God or spirit into your life. If you are in a difficult situation right now, you need to pray for the grace of God to come into your situation. And this is how you do it. God, I just pray for your unearned, undeserved favor and grace to come into my financial situation now. God, I just pray for your unearned, undeserved uh, favor to come into my marriage or into my career situation right now. And there's a great verse in the Bible, Psalms 3, 3, and it says, God is the lifter of your head. Wow, that is so powerful. There have been so many times that this one verse has really brought me from hopelessness to hope and faith. God is the lifter of your head. And it also said, God's ears are open to your cry. And he delivers them out of all of their troubles. Anybody in trouble, then you really need to cry out to God. And and it's amazing to me how so many people get mad at God in their situation. Well, Constance, I'm just mad at God because look at my life and how can he let this happen when really when really many times it's it's your own actions, it's your own choices and beliefs that have gotten you into the current situation that you are in. But God is so gracious, so loving, so kind that the Spirit is right there to help you and to provide for you and to give you the power that you need and to bring hope into your life. And so I want you to think about this recording and just think about how can you begin to bring more hope into your life? What things can you begin to do today after listening to this and just begin doing it? Don't, ju don't just listen. I want you to do it. I want you to take your power back. I want you to say, this is the last day that I'm going to be pitiful or powerful. So you answer that question. Remember, you've heard me say before, God said to me, Constance, do you want to be pitiful or powerful? And I was tired of being pitiful. If you feel that you need help, go to your doctor, get some meds, uh, you know, in order to really help because possibly biochemically you might need some assistance. There is no shame in that. Get rid of all of those hope killers, sugars, and and just spending money aimlessly or looking at too much TV or, or just around gossip and negative people. What can you do? What small baby step can you begin to take today? You know, I just believe Tony Robbins, he just says you need to take massive action now. And, you know, my perspective is a little different. I think you need to take small baby steps now. And if you feel led to take massive action and you can do that consistently, hey, go for it. All right, so this has really been a great teaching, if I say so myself, and I will say so myself. And, and I'm going to ask that you listen to it again and again. Tell a couple of your friends about it, possibly. They've been calling you and just sort of saying, oh, my God, this is what's going on. And this might be or this is a great tool that uh, you can really refer them to that will really help them. All right, well, all of you guys know that you can visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Would love to hear from you, Constance, at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And now I want you to listen to my wonderful love affirmation. And remember this, the best 
is yet to come. You better believe it. Hello, this is Constance Arnold, and I would like to welcome you to my affirmation recording on love. As you know, affirmations are a powerful way to change your consciousness. Your words are creative, and as you speak them, they go out into the universe and begin to change your life. More importantly, as you listen to these affirmations and speak them out loud, your paradigms will begin to shift and change, and your capacity to receive love will expand. So before we begin, remember that God is love and that the spirit of the universe is conspiring assisting and supporting you in attracting love. God is on your side, remember that. And the spirit that created billions of stars that directs the solar system is loving you and orchestrating and bringing to you your soulmate. Now, that is the flow in which I want you to begin listening to this recording. You can either listen to it or you can listen and repeat each affirmation after me. And as you do, believe with all of your heart that each time you repeat or listen to these affirmations, that that particular truth is manifesting in your life now. So get in a relaxed place. I want you to just relax. Slowly breathe in. Let it out. And just relax. God is the great matchmaker and is bringing love into my life now. Whomever I am searching for is searching for me. Love surrounds me and I have completely opened my heart to receiving love. I create my reality and by giving love unconditionally, I receive love. Every day, the universe sends love to me, and every day, I am worthy of receiving an abundance of love. My natural loving nature attracts love to me like a magnet. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. 
Constance will be back next week with another inspirational show. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com or send Constance an email at constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com.